Glitter is pretty. I love some sparkle. But is it safe around your eyes or in your eyes? Today, we're going to talk all about it. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Hi, I'm Dr. D. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. Here on this channel, I post educational videos about eye health and vision products. If you're new here, please like, subscribe, hit that bell so that you never miss a video. So today on the show, we're talking about glitter. <laughs> Today's video is all about glitter. We're gonna break down the differences in craft and cosmetic glitter. We're gonna talk about what the FDA says about glitter use around the eyes. And we're gonna go through some of the risks of using glitter around your eyes um, it, as it pertains to actual eye health. And I'll give you my thoughts on using glitter around your eyes. So you guessed it, pupils, it's time for eye school. So first, let's talk about craft glitter versus cosmetic glitter. First of all, what's the difference? Craft glitter is going to be made of larger particle sizes, variable particle sizes for that matter. It's also possible that craft glitter could be made from glass, metal, or even have um, poly, which is a type of plastic, with coated dyes. And so if you were to use craft glitter around your face, of course, you, you could potentially be putting metal, glass, or even these plastics that are coated with dyes that could then transfer to your eye and cause other problems. Cosmetic glitter, glitter for cosmetic use is typically made of PET, which is polyethylene tripethyl PET. PET is a microbead or a microplastic, which has its own environmental issues that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but there are also biodegradable glitters. Unfortunately, most of the glitters that make their way into cosmetic like makeups are gonna be that PET, so the literal microplastics. However, you know, biodegradable glitters really haven't made their way in large numbers to um, different types of eye makeups. Another cosmetic grade glitter is gonna be actually mica, and then there's um, synthetically made or lab made mica. This is how Lush Cosmetics got around using all microbeads or microplastics in their products. They went totally away from PET and went um, toward mica or synthetic mica. And there was one other one, borosilicates, borosilicates. Those are also another type of glitter in their makeups. All right, so the second question is, is there an eye safe glitter? And if there were, then how could I tell? So there's an opportunity here in the discussion about eye safe glitters to really delve down deep in the FDA um, regulations and um, you know the, their stance on glitter, basically. There really is no FDA approved glitter for use in the eye area. And as such, you'll see on many cosmetics that contain glitter, that there's a warning that says not intended for use in eye area. And as a result, you wanna be extremely, extremely careful about using glitter around the eye. And we'll talk about why when we get into the risks. So how would you tell if something's eye safe, if glitter in a cosmetic is eye safe? Well, here's a hint. None really are 100% eye safe and none really are 100% backed by the FDA or approved by the FDA as being eye safe. If you must use glitter around the eye, one thing you might consider is choosing a product that has smaller particles and less fallout. So if you're in the makeup world, glitter that is um, just gonna adhere to your skin better and not fall out or you know, kind of fall off and into your tear film. It, you wanna look for biodegradable when possible for multiple reasons. It's better for the environment and maybe better for your eyes as well. So next, let's get into the actual risks of glitter. This is where I feel like I can 
provide the most guidance as an eye doctor. There's a couple of really, really good videos on glitter that if you're really interested in this topic, I would recommend looking at, and I'll link them in my description box below, or I can even link out to their channels here um, in my video. But I think that these beauty bloggers did a really great job of digging down deep into the FDA information on glitter, on PET, and they explain it really well in their videos. But as it pertains to eye issues or risks of, oh, I burped, jeez. As it pertains to eye issues or risks of glitter actually in the eye, that's where I can really help you. So number one, there is the possibility always of glitter becoming what we call a foreign body. Any foreign body in the eye can be troubling, can be irritating, can cause redness, infection, and problems, right? So a piece of glitter, imagine craft glitter, that's a metal foreign body or a glass foreign body. And the havoc that that could reach, that could cause um, the scratch that that could cause in your cornea is just really devastating to think about. But a foreign body itself, you know, you could have a piece of glitter lodge up under your eyelid. It's very possible to sort of be embedded up under the lid. You could have a foreign body sensation from this. If you've got a piece of glitter trapped up under that lid, you'll certainly feel that every time you blink or move your eyes around. That also I have seen cause inflammation up under the lid. So I've actually seen a microbead, not specifically glitter, but I've seen a microbead that got lodged up under the eyelid and caused adjacent swelling and inflammation up under the lid that had to be treated with steroids before it would get better. So after removing that microbead, I had to treat that patient so that the eye would actually calm down again. Anytime there's a foreign body in the eye, the eye does do its best to get rid of it. And um, you know, it's very common to see some inflammation within the eye, whether that's redness, or um, papillary conjunctivitis, which is the inflammation that occurs up under the eyelid. The next, next risk of glitter in the eye would be an actual corneal abrasion. So in all the videos I watched leading up to this video, there was this story that became viral of a woman on Reddit who had used glitter, and in her case, I believe it was craft glitter, and a piece of it had gotten into her eye, scratched her cornea, it either wasn't um, treated correctly or wasn't caught very quickly, and that scratch turned into an infection. That infection got out of control. I don't want to say this wrong, but I believe maybe some corneal transplants were tried, and eventually she ended up with that eye being taken out completely. So that is certainly a worst case scenario with a corneal abrasion. I mean, a lot of things have to go wrong for that to occur. I see corneal abrasions weekly that you know with proper care can get better very quickly so don't just assume that a piece of glitter in your eye will you're going blind um, but that being said there is a very real risk to putting these small substances the these foreign bodies next to your eye that can get in the eye and cause a scratch you can go down that road, so it's very important to be careful. And it's especially, you're at higher risk if you wear contact lenses as well, because that's another foreign body that you're putting in the eye, and hygiene is involved, and so if you're less than hygienic about contact lens wear, get a scratch, wear the contact anyway, there's that possible avenue for bacteria to enter the eye and cause a, a terrible infection. So number four would be longer term issues. So a lot of the videos I watched talked about these sort of short term issues and is it really like possible that, um, you know, wearing glitter a couple of times is I'm gonna lose my eye from it. Probably not. It, it probably is not very likely that, that what happened on Reddit to that woman would happen to you. But as your eye doctor, I'm also concerned about sort of longer term effects from wearing products like this around your eyes. Namely, I get concerned, obviously I'm a dry eye specialist, I mentioned that at the beginning, but I get concerned about your meibomian glands and your tear film and the quality of your tear film. We know that anything around the eyes will end up in the eyes, right? So I've talked about this concept before, that's why I love Optase spray eye drops. I spray my face and then those drops make their way, they migrate into my tears. The same is true when I examine my patients. 
I often see makeup debris in their tear film itself. Well, my patients didn't put that makeup there. They put the makeup around the eyes, but somehow that shimmer, that glitter from way up here is making it into the tear film. And that's just a fact. We know that any makeup around the eyes, creams, cleansers, one stat I read was that they can move up to an inch from where the cosmetic was applied. And so if you're applying something around that eye area, it's making it into your tear film. So therefore, it's getting drained through your tear duct into the back of your nose. Um, it's staying there on the front surface of your eye. And I get concerned about things like your meibomian glands, which contribute the top layer to your tears. Um, we know that, you know, for instance, retinol in contact with the meibomian glands over the long term can cause changes in those glands. I've seen it in my clinic where glands are just dried up from being in contact with retinol. Now, glitter isn't the same thing as retinol, but similarly, having that product adjacent to your waterline, um, even if you didn't put it there, but it's traveling there, getting glitter, getting these, these um, you know, lab-made plastics in your meibomian glands, I just have concerns about that in terms of what's it gonna do to those glands long-term. And then finally, my last concern is irritation, inflammation, allergy. So the FDA does not monitor makeup like we maybe think it would or think it should in the United States. And as a result, even hypoallergenic brands are not necessarily going to be hypoallergenic for you. Keep in mind that inflammation and allergic reactions are possible um, with any cosmetic, but particularly I do worry about glitter. So if you're going to wear glitter, if you absolutely must do it, let's go over the safest way to apply and the safest way to remove. If you're gonna apply glitter, I would recommend doing so, number one, very sparingly. Try to avoid it if possible, keep it to special occasions only, and when you do apply it, never ever go near that waterline. Try and keep it as far away from your actual eye as possible. Check your label. See if you can find one of the synthetic micas, the borosilicate, <laughs> or potentially even a biodegradable glitter option. Now, in terms of the safest way to remove, this is very similar to the safe, safest way to remove makeup in general. You wanna loosen your makeup for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now, the products you use to remove your makeup are very much a personal decision. You can use a makeup eraser with water. You can use micellar water with a makeup eraser or on a cotton pad, or there are many other commercially available. But whatever your favorite makeup remover is, go ahead and hold it on your eye area for a good 10 to 15 seconds to help loosen the makeup before you start to rub. Then I want you to gently remove in one direction only. So just gentle strokes, try not to dig in too hard. This is delicate skin we're talking about around the eyes and I don't want you to unnecessarily give yourself wrinkles or cause damage to the skin. And that's it. Just remove it very, very carefully and try and soak it first. You know how like fingernail glitter is so hard to remove? Like I don't know if eye glitter is like that. Like. <sighs> And then there's like still three on there. You're like, ah. So what do you do if it goes wrong? What if you just, you're cleaning your glitter off and you get a big old hunk of it in your eye. What do you do when, it, when glitter goes awry? Okay, so number one, remove contact lenses right away. You wanna flush your eyes with saline or eye wash. If you do have a multi-purpose disinfecting solution for contact lenses like a Biotur or an OptiFree, that would be fine. If you've got artificial tears sitting around, um, definitely don't use Visine or any redness relieving product, but something that's pretty just, you know, gentle would be good to wash out the eyes. You can use artificial tears, but don't use any random eye drops laying around. Like I said, don't douse it with Visine and call your eye doctor. I mean, above all else, if you get glitter in your eyes, particularly if it's craft glitter or um, if you've been sleeping in your contacts and then you got glitter in there, definitely give your eye doctor a call so that treatment can be initiated immediately and you can avoid having any long-term complications. Glitter is a foreign body at that point and it carries all the risks that foreign bodies do. Secondary infection, abrasions, 
irritation, discomfort, inflammation. And then let's talk a little bit, since we're talking about glitter, about the environmental impact. So the thing about PET and using glitter that is made of PET is that that is a microbead. And this isn't an environmental channel, but I think it's really worth mentioning that microbeads are, are they outlawed? I don't even know. I don't think that they're using them very much in, in most things anymore. Are microbeads done? Well, PET glitter is basically a microplastic or a microbead, and so it is going to, it, it's not gonna degrade on its own, right? It would take, I don't even know how long it would take. It just isn't gonna happen, not in our lifetime or our children's, right? So microbeads are gonna stay around, they're gonna make it to the oceans, they're gonna um, make it into the poor turtles and the poor fish, and seriously, that's not a good thing. You know, we, we don't wanna be putting all this plastic into the environment, if at all possible. So do really consider that with your glitters. I mean, there's a little bit of a social impact here that I think is worth at least considering and looking for biodegradable glitter whenever you can. Um, I would certainly recommend using glitter very sparingly. There are some real risks when it comes to the environment, but when it comes to your eyes as well. So again, you're gonna use glitter, make sure to just be very careful with it, try to check your source, um, what is it made of, um, and get it off at night, certainly. You don't want it just floating around your face when you're you know, tossing and turning. You're gonna be more likely to get glitter in your eye that way. I, that's not like studied, but I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> In general, get your makeup off before bed. Okay, enough rambling about glitter. I hope that that was helpful to you. I certainly love um, the look of glitter, and I know many of you do, but I hope that this sheds some light on some of the eye complications that could result um, by wearing glitter, by using glitter. Make sure to like our channel and subscribe if you like this kind of content. We make all kinds of videos about eye health and vision products, and we're doing a lot more on beauty products around the eyes. So if you're here for that kind of content, leave me a comment down below and tell me what else you'd like to see. Thanks as always for tuning in, and we'll see you every Wednesday at 8 p.m. See you next time.